Previously, Shai Massot advises our undercover reporter on how to set up a pro-Israel movement in Britain. That's it. That's the way you establish organization. Tensions remain high after a dispute over anti-Semitism at the Labour conference. I saw Jackie walk on Saturday and thought, you know what, I can take her. She's like five two and tiny. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Well, I kind of, that says it all. In part three of the lobby, our undercover finds himself at the center of a scandal as he secretly records events described by the media as anti-Semitic acts. For the first time, the other side of the story. Following decades of violence, a new challenge has emerged to Israel's occupation of Palestinian lands, called BDS. BDS is here to stay. That's the global movement to boycott, divest, and impose sanctions on Israel and expose it as an apartheid state. The Israeli government has responded with a campaign to rebrand the country's image. The reason we should fight BDS is because it's wrong. It's a moral outrage. It's an operation run by the secretive Ministry of Strategic Affairs. They recruit mainly former intelligence officers. Its main task is to counter BDS worldwide. Using an undercover reporter, Al Jazeera's investigative unit exposes Israel's clandestine activities in London, a city that's become a major battleground. BDS campaign in many ways germinated in Britain. You'll meet the people working to challenge BDS at every level of British politics. It's really Ah, oh, OK, nice to meet you. We work really closely together. I like a lot of it behind the scenes. One of Israel's main targets is the Labour Party. For the first time, its leader is a champion of Palestinian civil rights. They'd be very happy to see Jeremy Corbyn no longer leader of the Labour Party, for sure. It's a covert action that penetrates the heart of Britain's democracy. Can I give you some evidence that we suggest you take down? It is outrageous interference in British politics. It shouldn't be permitted. It's a battle of ideas seeking to change not only how Israel is portrayed, but even how it is debated. It's anti-Semitic. No, it's not. It's it is anti The Labour Party is holding its annual conference in Liverpool. For the first time, the leader of a major British party is an outspoken critic of Israel. The Israeli embassy has sent its senior diplomats to canvas opinion. Our undercover reporter attends a private meeting of sympathetic labor activists. The ambassador, Mark Regev, tells them what to expect. Some of the, the people here are more Palestinian than the Palestinians. Yes. And the fashion is, if you were on the left today, Ambassador Regev suggests a message that should be delivered to other Labour Party members. Why are people who consider themselves progressive in Britain supporting reactionaries like Hamas and Hezbollah? We've got to say, in the language, I think, of social democracy, these people are misogynistic, they are homophobic. They are racist, they are anti-Semitic, they are reactionary. I think that's what we meant to say. It's an important message. Jeremy Newmark, the chairman of the Jewish labor movement, reveals how the message worked with a close ally of Jeremy Corbyn. Just again, while I'm Lewis, as one of Corbyn's key lieutenants onto an openly Zionist JLM platform took a lot of heavy lifting. Clive Lewis, MP for North South. Look, it's a real pleasure to have been invited here tonight. I've known Jeremy for over 20 years since my time working with the Jewish... Lewis's decision to condemn anti-Semitism at a JLM event was viewed as a tactical victory for the faction inside Labour that opposes Jeremy Corbyn. Corbyn is the party's first openly pro-Palestinian leader. The faction that supports him is called Momentum. We already have actually intelligence that from the momentum political directors meeting last night, they passed a vote of censure in Clive Lewis just for coming to our meeting in Sweden. At the time, Jackie Walker was Momentum's vice chair. She believes that reports of a crisis of anti-Semitism were a consequence of the same ruthless party infighting. Some of us would say it was mostly a constructed crisis for political ends. 
I would say, there is a crisis of the way that anti-Semitism is being manipulated and being used by certain uh, parts of not just the Labour Party, but other parties and the media to discredit Jeremy Corbyn and a number of his supporters. I mean, let's disagree politically. I'm anti-Zionist, they are pro-Zionist. Let's have that argument. Let's have that argument. Not this what's, that's going on at the moment, no. Everything is uh, wheels within wheels, you know? It's created a bit of division within momentum. No clothes. The day before, I had a debate with Jeremy Newmark. At one point, he turned his back on the audience and whispered to me, you're a court Jew. Now, anybody who is Jewish understands what that means. If you were being abused as a black person in the same way, you would be being called a house nigger. Did you report it to anyone in the party? I told my partner and I told some friends that that had happened. It's very hard to use a system which is so discredited, which the compliance unit is. Shai Massot, whose job at the embassy includes liaising with pro-Israel groups in Britain, ends the meeting with a summary of his achievements. The numbers, this year we did more than 50 events in the campuses of the universities of wow. the embassy. There are more than 100 events that happened by the Islamic society, by the cell that they arranged in the campuses. And uh, in addition to that, more than, I think, eight receptions for young people in the embassy, including two big, three receptions of 300 people that came, you know, uh, from the parliament. I, I would take a picture, yeah. Sure. Can I take a picture of him? Yeah, you can take a picture with that show. Please. Back at the LFI stall, Shai and the Israeli delegation continued debating whether to wear the pro-Israel T-shirts. Shai has a dream. Shai has a dream. I'm going to make it come true today. He wants me to put on the T-shirt. But you know, as Robin is my witness, I was going to put on that T-shirt today. And... <laughs> I have a dream that the activist will not be shame of what he's representing. I'm not shame of what I'm representing. It's a t-shirt and it's it's such a huge message. <laughs> I'm a genuine, it's a genuine, it's not a, it's a genuine question if you say. One party member was attending her first conference. I heard there was a Labour Friends of Israel stall and I thought this would be a really good opportunity to have a dialogue with a group I know who have a lot of influence and it'd be very interesting to hear their ideas. So I found where their stall was. Can I just ask you, yes, you're very anti the um, settlements. What, what, what is Labour Friends of Israel doing about them? They are really... We make our view clear and we meet with people at all levels in Israeli politics and um, diplomatic um, circles, etc. And we make it absolutely clear we're not friends of Israel and Israel and Palestine. Hence our um, new uh, campaign launching next month and that we're showcasing here. We believe in a two state solution in coexistence and self-determination for both people. And that's really how um, that come about, do you think? Well, our job is to support at any possible means that can bring it about. So what, 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 what are we supporting this coexistence project, which is what this is about? I had no idea quite honestly, who was behind the stall. There was a woman behind the stall. My first series of questions from memory was simply to say, I was very interested to know how a two-state solution would come about. What would be the details? Not a slogan, but the details. What do you like Israeli occupation? Well, what we want is a two-state solution. And the reason we've not got it now at the moment is because it's a distinct look for security. Supporters of a two-state solution believe that a peace deal based on national boundaries that existed in 1967, before Israel's occupation, will one day lead to a viable Palestinian state. 
but the continued growth of Israeli settlements and occupied land has made an independent state all but impossible. If you look at a map of the West Bank and East Jerusalem today, you are looking at a fragmented territory that Israel has colonized now for almost half a century. Practically speaking, a two-state solution is just not possible under these conditions. I was actually seeking some reassurance that a two-state solution, if that's what they were promoting, was still possible. We don't suffer. I think we have to be very, very careful um, not to let our feelings about us more. So no feelings can be I'm not going to say that. We have to be very careful not to say that. Don't, we, don't, we, don't we all want a two state solution based on coexistence and peace? I said time and again, I'm here to talk about the two state solution which you are promoting. And this is what I'd like to learn about. It's clear that the Israeli state, no matter which party is in power, has got absolutely no desire or inclination to relinquish the territories occupied after 1967. But the questions that that throws up are the kinds of questions that people don't want to ask or don't want to answer. Anyone who supports Israel has to ask himself or herself the following question. There are two possible scenarios, and only two possible scenarios. Either I support the new state of Israel, which is an ethnic apartheid state, or I support a change of regime in Israel, namely that the, the state and the country as a whole would go through a genuine process of democratization as did uh, apartheid South Africa. There is no third option. It's Thank you, Jean. I'm having no. a conversation. No, I'm, 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 no, I'm asking you about the uh, settlements. They've totally atomized the whole of the West Bank. I'm asking you, I'm really genuinely interested. How is do two state solution? Two state solution. But how can it come about if yeah. the whole of the West Bank so is atomized? So, but in, pra okay, but in practical terms, the impact of the friends of Israel, that's what you're no, no, doing. No, as part but I'm asking, in terms, of, in terms of the West Bank is atomized, where will the state be? I mean, that is a genuine, genuine question, where will the state be? The activists who came to ask her tough questions about the settlements, actually, that was her main point. She didn't ask her about Judaism or the existence of Israel. She just wanted a straight answer. How does anyone who supports Israel justify the settlements? We go over there, we witness, but nothing changes. Everywhere. I was quite interested in whatever funds they had and influence they had how would this bring about a two-state solution? That was my very basic question. You've got a lot of money, you've got a lot of prestige in the world. I don't know why you get that. Sorry? Why are the friends of Israel? have got a lot of money. Well, I think That's so. I hear that you know, it's a stepping stone to good jobs. A friend of mine's son's got a really good job at Oxford University on the basis of having worked for Labour Friends of Israel. If you just oh, believe yes. rumours, then... It's not a rumour, it's a fact. It's anti-Semitic. No, it's not it is, It's a trend. It's, it's not. about conspiracy. It's, it's, it's not. About it's not. Sorry, it is. It's not. Anyway, I that's am... my view, and I think we have to I... agree to differ. No, I don't think we do have to well, agree to differ. I'm agreeing to differ. I want to... I'm ending the conversation, because I am not really... Um, wishing to engage in a conversation that talks about get involved with this and then you get a good job in the in, in, in Oxford or the city or Joan Ryan falsely claimed that Jean referred to jobs in the city, London's financial center. And it comes very clearly in the discussions that you have filmed that the woman was not anti-Semitic. They know it. She didn't talk like an anti-Semitic person. She was a typical pro-Palestinian 
person who was worried about the violations of, human, of the Palestinian human and civil rights. Ryan continued to reference banking, a traditional anti-Semitic trope, as she left the conference hall with our undercover reporter. But Jean had never mentioned it. At no point did I ever say that Labour Friends of Israel will get people jobs in banking in the city. I did say, which is absolutely true, that I know the son of a friend of mine who he believed himself that having some connection with Labour Friends of Israel didn't harm his career at all. That evening, at a rally to combat anti-Semitism organized by the Jewish labor movement, Joan Ryan described her day at the stall. But we have also had three incidents of anti-Semitic harassment on our stand to the people who are stopping that stall today. And that, I can tell you something about why we need to be having this against anti-Semitism rally. By the following day, word had spread about Jean's exchange at the LFI stall. Several MPs came by and expressed concern, including Jeremy Corbyn's former challenger, Angela Eagle. I think he had a couple of problems yesterday, but today's been better. Well, we did have one person uh, towards the end of the day come and say the incident is just being used to crush Jeremy, and that the allegations are sort of made up to a certain extent which is obviously awful, but compared with stuff yesterday, it's sort of not that as bad. Some of that sort of stuff is I'm coming off my sort of less shocks about that than I was about, but that happened yesterday. I know, I know, you're coming about it. How are you anyway? Are you OK? I'm absolutely loving it. <laughs> As well as Jean's case, other alleged incidents of anti-Semitism involve the attempt to replace the labor leader, Jeremy Corbyn. Another prominent Corbyn opponent arrives at the stall and hugs Jennifer Gerber, the director of the LFI. Labor MP Shaka Umana asks for an update on the anti-Semitic incidents. Oh, God, yeah. So, 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 one Nazi came up and basically said the coup was uh, run by Jews, it was Jewish MDs and Jewish Marines, uh, and Andrew Eagle's husband. He's Jewish. Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he could make it up, could he? <laughs> <laughs> we were, we were caught in it. And, and so that was incident one. What were the other two? Uh, Joan, you were... Joan dealt with the other incidents. Right. The other incidents yesterday. Uh, I reported that incident. That woman. She took a video of me then. Joan Ryan, local friends of Israel, I'm not really walking away while we'll answering questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't show any of the bits where I said, you know, you're being yeah. anti Semitic. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. obviously not um, So I made a formal complaint. So well, yeah. I am very shocked about the way she described my words to other people. I feel very anxious and that she should be misinterpreting me totally to other people. I find that very, very worrying. But, I mean, I really yeah, wrote yeah, down, you know, like, all this what she was saying about the being rich and powerful. Yeah, 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 one who went to yeah. Oxford, I mean, and the next like, minute he's got a big I job in banking. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, and I said that, you know, classic anti-Semitic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have no idea how she got from A to Z going from my comment, which was what it was, to then saying he got a, a big job in banking. Maybe she believes her own trope, if that's the word they use. We had a woman saying, no, 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 I've, I've, never, I've, I've never seen oh, this. Oh, my Jewish friends have said, well, it is real. Is it real? Is it really real? It's just been yeah. used to crush yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, and I said, there's a bit, you know, I thought, you, like, would you say that to any other, you know, like, I've experienced homophobia, but I don't deny it. But anyway, it's only for you, I guess. Yeah. That's the way it's uh, out of it. 
people have been positive. Yeah. We'll sign up lots of people. Yeah, do you know what? Most people have been positive and nice. And kind of like solidarity. People are coming off like solidarity. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah in making daily confessions that he's not anti-Semitic and so on. That is, I think, going to be the defining narrative, actually, now, which is anti-Semitism. And do you know what? That denies, you know, what I found, I said to her, you heard me a couple of times saying, I find that upsetting that as a Jew, yeah. you're telling me, like, and she didn't give up. Yes. Yeah. Like, I think it's, if an anti-Semite comes up, you know, if somebody says to me, Jews, they're all f big noses in the control of the world. I'm like, wow, but you're, you're an anti-Semite, that's terrible. Someone like her worries me more, because is she an anti-Semite? I don't know. But she basically denies the fact that it exists. She just thinks it's made up. And the group I, discusses which act of alleged anti-Semitism was worse. Ruben believes that Jean's discussion with Joan Ryan was amongst the most serious. Uh, no, 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 no. It's just been acceptable. the stuff we missed yesterday with like, explicit anti-Semitism. <laughs> Difficult moments, women who told us that anti-Semitism, you know, is being concocted to crush Corbyn. That is what she said, and I think people, like, if we're not making getting it out there. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But is that anti-Semitic, guys? I don't know. Like. That's the guy. I don't. I don't know where my line is anymore. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I think it's different to yeah. today. I think and if it makes you feel uncomfortable, I mean, that's the point which you call it out and report it. And that's why Joan convinced me to report the one the yeah. other way, because I was made to feel uncomfortable. Yeah. And although nothing anti-Semitic was said, I'm sure it had, was, there were undertones of it, and mm. it, was, the con it was brought upon by that yeah. context. I thought Labour Friends of Israel were talking about Palestine because they were promoting a two-state solution. Now I find they don't want to talk about Palestine. And if you do talk about Palestine, it would appear you're kind of sucked into having uh, an accusation of anti-Semitism brought against you. At the end of the day, if you if you feel offended by it and uncomfortable for it, this should be a safe space, and anything that breaks that should be reported. Yeah. I think. There is that line on the scene. I don't know. So they're really scratching the bottom of the barrel to make a list of two and a half cases of anti-Semitism. Two out of the three, uh, they themselves are not totally sure that they fall into their own strict definition of anti-Semitism. Jean was unaware that her exchange with Joan Ryan had made national news and that a complaint of anti-Semitism was lodged. I felt overwhelmed by being at the conference. I had no idea there would be so many things to go to, so many interesting workshops to go to, seminars at the same time as people speaking in the main hall. My husband hadn't been very well, so we actually left a day early. Shortly after, Joan Ryan's assistant emailed Robin asking him to be a witness to Jean's alleged act of anti-Semitism. Yeah, I kind of feel it was an anti-Semitic you know, trope against Israel and like Jews controlling and having power and, and money. I thought it was, I think, although she didn't say Jews and she said Israel, it's definitely on the line, do you know what I mean? Because if she had said the word Zionist, I would have said 100%, 100%. Despite being unsure of what he had witnessed, Richardson had no qualms about the expulsion of a fellow Labour Party member. How it works is, you know, you make the complaint to the Malay Party within their own rules will decide. I, I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect this woman um, might be potentially banned, but she did say something that was anti-Semitic. After Jean had left the conference, she was contacted by a Labour Party investigator. He would only say that it was about a serious incident. I was thinking, had I seen a fire take place? Had I seen someone throw a bottle? Had I seen a fight break out? I was really racking my brain, thinking, what incident had I seen? Was I aware of? Was I a witness to something? And almost by return came an email that it was my conduct that was being investigated. I was totally shocked. That was like a real bombshell.
In part four, the senior political officer at the Israeli embassy wants a private word with our undercover reporter. I want to speak with you. This is doing actually over a coffee, but yeah, just let's do it on the way to the event. Okay, whatever, if you like. There seems to be a problem. I can give you an idea, but you, you need to approach them independently. Do you understand? And when does lobbying become espionage? Can I give you some advice that I suggest that you will take down? <laughs> well, you know, if you look hard enough, I'm sure that there is something that we're trying to hide. <laughs> It strikes me that this is the sort of job which the intelligence services should do to have a good look at what's going on.